Hello everybody and welcome back. Tonight I have an interesting uh, report of a wolf spotted in the Forest of Dean and it was sent across to me by my friend Angela um, when we were chatting. And it's in the Gloucestershire Live, wolf spotted in the Forest of Dean near Colford. And we do have wildman accounts in that area so I thought you might find it a little bit interesting. It says Gloucestershire boasts some pretty unique wildlife from feral pigs to mysterious sightings of large black cats. But now it looks like another creature is living amongst us. Wolves have apparently been spotted living in the forest of Dean and wildlife explorer Frank Tunbridge is investigating them. Over the years he's been called out to numerous reports of big cat sightings. But most recently he's been asked to help to find wolves which are apparently living in the forest of Dean, just outside Colford. One day, Frank had a call from a man who said he had seen wolves out and about whilst he'd been walking his Jack Russell dog. Frank said, I've been called out to reports of wolves now living around Colford. I met with a chap that had seen one and also his work colleague on a different day had also seen a wolf as well. He was describing to me how he'd been out walking his dog and all of a sudden a wolf had appeared on the track in front of him. I wanted to be sure that he would not confuse the wolf with a husky dog, so I sent him a photo. A husky has a very wide chest, and a wolf's chest is small. It's almost as big as a hand span width, so quite small. He confirmed that it had been a wolf that he had seen. Anyhow, I went one day with my friend to the place that he said he saw the wolf. It was very quiet, and I think I saw one jog on that was about it. I said to my friend that I was going to howl and see if I got a reaction. So I clapped a bit and started howling. And would you believe it? A wolf howled back. Frank says that a wolf would howl back to warn any other wolves from another pack and to let them know not to come any closer as it's their territory. He said, well, I was gobsmacked that I heard something back. It was as clear as anything. Frank is also a bit of an expert on large cats, which have been spotted in Gloucestershire. And he started documenting his experiences of exotic wildlife encounters in the early 90s, in the early 70s, sorry. Now he has around 10 books with his memoirs on the events. Frank, 71, from Podsmead said, As a child, we lived in rented rooms in London after the war, and we lived near Regent Sue, and my father used to go drinking with one of the zookeepers there. One day, my dad's friend said that I should go to the zoo before it opens and have a look around. It was then that I developed a real interest in nature and wildlife. My sister, Audrey, who was 16 years older than me, used to visit and take me out all over the place to visit animals in different places, and I loved it. When the Dangerous Animals Act came out during 1976, many of the dangerous animals had been let out into the woods as people were not able to ensure that the animals stayed in confined locations where they were not posing a threat to any others. Frank said in those days, in the 60s and 70s, people used to keep anything. They would keep exotic animals in the houses or grounds of where they lived. I was fascinated with the reports I read, especially the big cats and wolves. So they are out there, but they have evolved to be able to live in a wildlife surrounding and have acclimatised to their new habitats over the years. Frank is a firm believer in appreciating that what the world has around you and taking time to appreciate nature. He said, people should be going out there and observing the wildlife that is around us generally, just being quiet and still and seeing what happens. Animals can sense if you're looking for them, so they're less likely to appear. Just the other day when I was out walking the dog, I was by the canal and I saw a kingfisher sat on a branch. And he dived in and caught a fish and caught, swallowed it whole. Things like that, these nature programs make us spend months collecting the footage for, for us to watch in our homes. But honestly, there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. Of course, he's been called to other sightings of things. Frank said, one time I was, caught, I was called out, there were reports of a big cat in Thrup. And I went up there and made myself an army mesh dig and hid out in the wooded area of the field. I threw a fish and chicken out in front of the hive and just sat and waited there for hours. It became dust and I heard a loud purr or under the breath growl. I thought to myself that he knew that I was there. I looked almost to my right and then I gently moved back and I saw the back of it. I never had the hairs on the back of my neck stand up like that before. It took the bait and went, he said. Another time I was driving back home at night on the Painswick Road and a large black cat, like a panther, was in the middle of the road. 
it rolled its shoulders and jumped up the bank and went its way. There are other reports that convince Frank that there are also wolverines living in the countryside and lynxes too. Now, I know of a wolf account in Paul Kemet, um, a gentleman who saw a wolf chasing a herd of deers and a herd of cows, sorry, in a farmer's field, and he actually phoned the police and reported it. Um, <coughs> so do we have wolves out there in the UK? I know Mike, the werewolf guy, has been collecting um, accounts from people of large wolf-like canid creatures that are down on all fours and remain down on all fours. So if any more comes in on this or anything else like it, I will definitely bring it to you. But for now, have a very good weekend, and I'll see you all. Hopefully, I'm going out with Karen tomorrow, so I might have a bit of news on the little shelter. Um, if the rain holds off, you never know. So until next time, thank you very much. Good night.